All right, what's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a wonderful night or day. I'm going to just jump right into this. So this is going to be a live stream talking about a game that was uh, released. Well, not necessarily released, but announced at the Game Awards yesterday. It's a game called Nightingale. Nightingale. And it's, it seems like it's an upcoming survival sandbox, but there's a lot that I want to talk about with this one. So I figured I'd do a little bit of a deep dive live stream and kind of learn alongside you guys and talk a little bit about what this game is and where it comes from. So just to give a brief description, this game is being spearheaded by like ex Bioware developers. So people that worked on games like Mass Effect, Dragon Age, um, stuff like that. So just by principle, I have to, you know, really get interested and support this game because they've completely like made my childhood with some of those games. Knights of the Old Republic as well, I almost forgot. Um, I know that one of the first questions is probably gonna be, is this one an MMO? And so I have, I have a thing about that. So it's not marketed as one, it's marketed as like a survival sandbox. However, it, they are in partnership with um, Improbable. So Implexian Games is the per people that are developing this one but they are partnered with Improbable. And Improbable uses IMS, and this game is going to be using that too. And I have something that I wanna show you guys after we watch the trailer, because um, this might actually be a game that's capable of having thousands and thousands of people all in one place. If you're not aware, there was a game called Scavengers that actually had a test a while back, and they had about 4,000 players all in one area testing out the system to see if it would work. And it was pretty successful as far as I saw. So. I have my um, my uh, curiosities about how this is going to go, and I have my predictions about what's going to happen here. And I think by like the definition, it could potentially be considered an MMO, but I think they're being careful to not advertise it as such. But let's just go ahead and start with watching the trailer, and um, and I'll show you what I'm talking about right after. So I'll go ahead and put this right up here, and let's go. Since the day the portal network collapsed, stranding us in these realms, we have searched for a way home. Lost and alone in the dangerous labyrinth of fantastical worlds. Welcome to the lands of Fae. Portal is a chance for salvation. Uniting the lost survivors. Or leading us deeper into this nightmare. Nightingale, our beacon of hope. But beyond our reach. As long as we stand together, our journey will unite us. You, Looks super cool. The realm walkers are all that is left. So that's Nightingale. So this game takes place in the 18th century. Um, it's classified as the Victorian era, I believe. And it looks like, so in the game, we're going to be classified as realm walkers, like they said. And they're not marketing it as an MMO. Um, you guys are right there classifying it as like a co-op game and saying that we're going to be able to go through these portals. And I've noticed that on the website, and, they, and the website is available now, and I highly recommend signing up to test it out when the alphas come out and the betas come out as well. But I've noticed on the website that they're very careful not to say exactly how many people there's, you know, there's going to be per server or, or like in a specific match or, you know, whatever like that. At first, I was kind of thinking maybe it was going to be like session based 
at one point in time, I was thinking that like maybe Icarus, uh, that kind of thing, or is it going to be like a Conan Exiles, Valheim sort of deal instead? And it's not exactly clear, but one thing I wanted to show you guys, and one thing I'm curious to see if they're going to fully um, utilize is the improbable system. So if you didn't see uh, towards the end of the video, when it showed the website, it actually had a portion in there where it said IMS powered by IMS right here. So that stands for, I believe it's improbable multiplayer systems or service, something like that. I have a link to it um, on, on my other tab, but um, I want to show you guys a little bit of what the improbable multiplayer system can do. So I, I looked at this last night because I tried to remember if the scavengers game, cause that's the, that's the part, that's the, that's the game that I remembered improbably being involved with recently. And I tried to remember if that was actually something that, that they did. Cause I remember this like big auditorium and this was another event that happened recently. And there was a big auditorium and they had a ton of players involved and they tried to see if the server would actually handle all those thousands or hundreds of people being in one place. So this is scavengers right here. This is a 4,000 player test that they did a while back. Of course, scavengers is by no means an MMO or anything like that. It's a battle Royale, but this really had me curious because I started to wonder just how big of a game they're planning to make uh, nightingale or like how much, how many players we're going to have um, in one place all at once. Uh, but yeah, it does seem like it's more like an FPS fantasy adventure. It does seem like it's first person. And that was mentioned in some of the articles that I was reading. Um, it doesn't seem like it's like third person or anything like that. I don't, I'm assuming they're probably not going to give us an option for, you know, using a third person camera. Some sandbox games do, you know, like Arc Conan, of course, we can use third person in, in those games. But so far, I haven't seen anything about that yet. But that, yeah, this is super crazy just seeing this here. And it seems like improbable what they're trying to do with that IMS system is try to create games that are capable of having a crazy amount of people in one place. And what I started thinking about with this Nightingale game was I was really curious to see if uh, like these this portal system um, had me thinking about the grid system that's getting more popular now with games like if you played Myth of Empires, um, I'm pretty sure they're still running by this grid system. Atlas also had it where you had um, one server, so it was like a hundred by hundred or a hundred player server, but you could also go to other servers too. And um, did I say Atlas? Life is Feudal also had this kind of thing as well for their MMO. So I was curious to see if they're planning to do something like that, um, but they're just using this. They're just calling it this portal system, or if we're going to be able to ever have like you know hundreds of people in one place, or if it's just going to be full on co op the entire time. And like we only get maybe 12 people kind of similar to Valheim's numbers or just four people and that's it. Um, when I looked at the trail, when I looked at the trailer a little bit closer for uh, Nightingale, when we, when they got to the building part, uh, this is a part that I tried to pay attention to. I noticed, and I don't know if this is going to be representative of what's going to actually happen, but I noticed when we got to the base building part, it was around here because I went frame by frame that we had multiple people like in this this area here um at one point it kind of showed like there was about six to eight people or something like that let me see if i can go back in the video and kind of showcase that a little bit better but it seemed like we had a decent chunk of people all in one place right there like at least six to eight right here i think i spotted at least so this is was this five that person right there okay that's one two three four i'm sorry six right counting us so we got six right there and then a little bit farther in the trailer right here it seemed like there was more like a decent chunk but i think i'm just seeing about five or six people all together in this one too so i don't know what's going to happen there with what they're planning to do like if they're going to try to make it um like a large scale grid system or what's going to happen there um uh, <laughs> scavenger does things better than new world i know on on that side of things um I, I know that New World Wars was really, really laggy, and I really wanted to see that game host features that allowed like a hundred or, you know, a decent chunk of people, like 50 to 100 people all in one place in the open world have features like that. And um, I did see one person kind of reference this game as what New World started as, like a survival sandbox, which New World was at one point in its first alpha phase. Uh, it was going to be that and it just you know flipped the script and became something else over time but i also got a lot of vibes from greedfall for this one from this one and that's why i have it in that category as well because it does remind me a lot of that just the aesthetic the 
gameplay itself almost as well. If Greedfall was first person, it just really reminds me of that. But yeah, it seems like uh, co-op building is going to be a thing for sure. I just don't know how big of a scale it's going to be. But this is led by Mr. Flynn, and it also said in one of the articles that I was reading that some of the veteran or some of the developers on this team were also involved in a lot of the uh, Bioware games like Dragon Age, Star Wars: The Old Republic, Mass Effect, that kind of thing. He's it seems like he was. I just recently found this a couple hours ago, but Mr. Flynn was heavily involved in those games as well. And I wanted to make sure that he was involved in Origins as well because that's my absolute favorite. But he was involved in Origins, Knights of the Old Republic. Um, those games. So I kind of wonder where those people went because I didn't actually look too deep into it because as we know, Anthem, that game really su like super, super flopped. And by that point, by the time Anthem was starting to be made, I remember hearing that most of the ex Bioware developers that had worked on the previous games were gone at that point. So um, it seems like this is where they went. I was reading an article that said that they had gone to the studio called and, and they are calling it in Plexian Games, but it used to be called improbable canada and like even in this polygon article it talks about how uh, N night gale is the debut game from inflexion games the new studio from x bioware general manager mr flynn i can't say that first name i'm sure it's aaron but i don't want to mess up the pronunciation but yeah it was revealed during the game awards last night and it does seem to be in the victorian era so a victorian fantasy world but um yeah i'm I'm absolutely ecstatic that these people that have worked on games that I really knew and love are working on this new game. It's got me super curious so far. So I want to dive into the website first before we talk about some of the other articles. So on the website, it does show a little bit of a description here. So we're going to be lost in the Fey Realms. And this is another thing that totally reminded me of Greedfall. I don't even know why, really. But it says that we're stranded beyond our world, cut off by the sudden collapse of an arcane portal network. The catastrophic event has left us and countless others fighting for survival in a labyrinth of mysterious and perilous realms. So it seems like we might be able to go to different biomes through these portals or different, at least different worlds. But what I'm really curious to know is if it really is going to follow this grid, uh, grid system where we start out on a server, maybe it's like 50 to 100 players. We go to another, we go through this portal and then it goes to another 50 to 100 player server or excuse me, or how exactly that's going to work. But it says, prepare for a journey, danger, and discovery as you search for a way back to the last haven of humanity, Nightingale. Um, they did advertise it as having rich crafting, building, of course, building and survival, but also rich crafting in its world. So it's sh a shared world survival crafting game set in an all new fantasy universe. Um, they haven't shown a whole lot on the crafting system, at least not that I've seen just yet. But I want to see how intricate they're planning to make this crafting system because i've played sandboxes in the past that have had really really detailed ones like mortal online even though that game is not widely popular across like uh, the mmo space or you know even as far as survival game uh, survival games go that game has had a really really crazy crafting system so i want to know if they're planning to go that far where we can design um a lot of different aspects of, of the craft like if we're able to put a certain amount of material into the thing we're crafting if we're able to craft like let's say we want to craft a sword if we're able to craft like the handle separately the blade separately um how that's going to go um so i'm really curious to find out more about that because i can i can seriously enjoy crafting if it is a intricate crafting system um it's something that i can really get down with but it's just all about how detailed is it really going to be a second okay Wait, somebody asked a question. Hold on. Okay. But the next part, it says, explore the realms, traverse foreboding forests, harrowing swamps, and shimmering deserts as you restore the portal leading to de leading deeper into the lands of the Fae. So we did see deep, uh, different biomes in that video itself, but it even clarifies and doubles down on that here that we're going to be seeing different biomes the desert area that we saw in here looked really really cool i like the i like the desert area a lot let me see if i can go back to it i like this friendly giant as well this one right here so in this part of the video it definitely seems like we're going to have some base rays going on so wave defense so it's probably going to be like what is that system called in conan is it the purge or um it's where 
your base starts getting attacked by a bunch of different monsters and i'm sure there's other there's other sandboxes that have that too now i'm assuming but looks like we're gonna have to fight once we build our base defend it we got to keep these monsters back and i do like the mob variety so far it seems like they've got quite a few unique ones this one at the very beginning this one creeped me the hell out like when we saw that at the game awards yesterday that was freaky as hell. I do not want to fight those things. Hell no. Is this a MMO or co-op? So they're advertising it as a co-op, so I don't think it's going to be seen as an MMO. Um, I, I don't think it's really going to be a thing where you just jump into one server and you have thousands of players all together. Um, if anything, they might do the grid system. That's what I'm thinking them they might do so these portals because we're going to be traversing the land through these different portals going to different biomes and worlds and stuff like that i think that's going to be either done through the grid system or that's just going to be co-op so like just 12 players eight eight players and then maybe you can come across other people maybe not but no i don't think i don't think they're class uh, classifying it as an mmo and i definitely wouldn't call it an mmo at at, at all yet definitely not yet but the next parts we've got building and crafting so we can construct estates, farms, and communities to live off the land, craft the tools, gear, and weapons you need to survive. Um, I did hear something about windmills that we might be able to get access to, to those. So farming might be a pretty big part of the game as well. Oh yeah, I see that in the background too. Um, the articles, they seem to go into a little bit more detail. I don't really think I've seen anyone, any of them that have done full-on interviews yet, but uh, the articles seem to delve a little bit into how things are going to work. I don't know where, where exactly they were getting that info from, but we can kind of read through them a little bit um, as we go along here. This next one is shared world, adventure alone or unite with other players, combine your strengths and skills and face the challenges of the realms together. I dare you to call it an MMO. No, absolutely not. <laughs> no, because you have to be super careful with, especially these days when you call games MMOs. I feel like if they're going to do the grid system, uh, since Myth of Empires is currently, even though I don't, I think there's a lot of people that still wouldn't consider it. I don't think I would fully consider it one, but there are people that still consider it an MMO right now. If they were to do the grid system um, and it was like 500 people per server, then maybe, but I, I don't think they're going to be doing that though, especially because they advertise it on co as co-op. I think it's going to be on the lower scale. But yeah, we'll have to see what happens there for sure. But the next, the last part is Gaslight, uh, Gaslamp Fantasy. Open world realms immerse you in a mythical Victorian setting where the remnants of humanity are threatened by the dark magic and nightmarish creatures of the Fae. And then for the FAQ, we've got, just like we saw before, shared world survival crafting game set in a rich Gaslamp Victorian setting. And does it have multiplayer? Yes, you can play solo or with friends and other players who you meet across the realms. So this is the this is another part that kind of makes me think it might have a grid system or it might just be a thing where you can go on to other player sessions maybe like I don't I don't know how exactly this is going to work but I'm really curious because I think that'll I think that'll really tell us what we're going to be able to expect like how big of a scale it's going to be but the fact that it uses IMS I would imagine that they're going to try to do something big um, and if they do the grid system, I, I think with IMS, like with how many people we were able to see in the scavengers test, that they'd probably be able to pull it off pretty well, potentially even better than other games would. Is it similar to Conan Exiles? Um, so far, yeah, it does seem like it has its similarities co to Conan. I mean, in the trailer, we can see, um, even the building to a certain degree kind of looks like, because when, with these Unreal with these Unreal games, the sandboxes, a lot of the building uh, starts to look the same after a little while. So if we look at like the placement here, like we pause it and kind of look at that, it does, it reminds me a little bit more of like uh, Ark. I, I don't want to say Rust because I haven't played Rust in a little while, but it does remind me a little bit of Ark or Conan. But yeah, I'm see we're seeing other aspects of Conan in here too. Like, uh, of course, with the wave defense thing, because I remember with Conan, I think there was a purge system where you had to defend, um, what's it called? Your base from mobs and whatnot. And then, of course, this right here. I forgot what they're called in Conan, the Titans, or the gods, or what, whatever they're called. This giant appears to be, at least to me, he appears to be something like that. 
And uh, yeah, it definitely has a lot of survival sandbox aspects to it already. And they're, they're advertising it as that. So yeah, I can, I can totally think that we're going to expect a lot of similarities. And then for the camera view though, it's strictly first person from what we've seen so far. And from the articles, what they've been saying, they say it's going to be first person as well. But yeah, that giant also reminds me of Conan too. I like that. If you're not able to see hundreds of other human players while you're playing a game, then it's, yeah, absolutely. So, and, and they haven't really given a lot of information on how many players are going to be in an area at one time or, or how exactly this portal system is going to work. So it seems like even they are trying to be super careful to not call it an MMO, especially because when you, when you do that these days, it's very dangerous if it's not actually going to be anything even remotely similar to that. But let me go ahead and talk about these other ones too. So with the IMS improbable system, like I said, how they're, they're featuring the IMS system for Nightingale. Let me go ahead and go to the website and we can talk a little bit more about what this is and why I'm so curious about how exactly they're going to be handling the server situation and how many people we're going to see on screen at one time. So yeah, it stands for improbable multiplayer services made for more. So like we saw with the scavengers test, it seems like it aims to keep a lot of, or get a lot of people in one area, make massive, massive, um, areas for games and stuff like that. So I don't know if maybe they're, they might make a portal area. And I was thinking about this earlier because somebody asked about PVP. That's what it was. Um, I haven't seen anything advertised about PVP either. It seems like they're talking about it as it's strictly co-op so far. So, uh, what I, what I was thinking is maybe there's a portal we can go into and we might be able to enter a lawless world where we can actually, you know, fight and kill other people, or they're just not going to have PVE or I'm sorry, PVP at all, at least during the beginning part of the game. But yeah, so far I haven't seen anything that suggested that they're going to have PVP, at least not yet. So we are with IMS, we provide more than the leading edge technology. And I, I'm trying to remember what other games tried to use it. I know when we were talking about this yesterday during the Game Awards stream, uh, somebody had told me that, or somebody had said that like all the games that have tried IMS so far, a lot of them have fa had failed. And I looked at Scavengers because that was the only one that I knew of recently that had you know, that IMS had been a part of. And it seemed like, at least for the Steam charts side of it, that a lot of it was um, an issue with the game as opposed to, you know, the actual system IMS or the, you know, the system itself. It seemed like it was more of a game issue. And of course, it's a battle royale and that genre has been redone to death. So I think, you know, it was kind of doomed from the start. But I'm really curious to see exactly how the IMS system is planning to be utilized in this game because I I feel like if they're using IMS for this and then it just ends up being like a four to twelve player thing and that's that's like it that it it might you know be a little bit of a waste so we're gonna have to wait for more information we don't want to jump to conclusions just yet that's just my that's just my idea of what might happen you know with the grid system and everything we talked about earlier British Valheim it's kind of it's yeah we can kind of call it something like that too i mean it's going to be uh it seems like you know graphically especially it'll be much more on the beautiful side much more on the high quality side i mean just graphically from what we were seeing in the trailer itself it it's got really high fidelity compared to other sandboxes especially like valheim but feature wise i would hope in the open world wide as i would hope that it's similar to valheim um, this portal system seems like we might, we might, uh, see that on potentially double or triple the scale, or at least close to the scale of Valheim, because if we're going to be going through these portals and going into entirely different worlds, I would hope that they're actually going to feel like a, the scale of a world and not just some, you know, small little Island that we just spend 10 minutes on and we've explored the entirety of, cause that would just be a super waste, but that could also be the main thing that they're planning to use the improbable system for as well. And what, what I kind of think of too, is as I was kind of thinking of no man's sky, uh, with the portal system, because for me, I was kind of curious if they were going to do something where, uh, so everybody who starts their sessions, they are just automatically entered into this, or at least this is how it was, you know, advertised in the beginning with no man's sky. They're just like automatically entered into this 
entire universe and then you can just come across people at, you know at random just by going through these portals you can just go into their sessions or go into their already existing worlds and then maybe find their bases find them potentially if they're online at the time we don't know how we don't know exactly how it's going to work yet but it's got me really interested so far let's go ahead and talk about this next one though so this is the polygon one that we talked about earlier so for Nightingale, it's going to cast players as realm walkers, survivals of a survivors of a mag magical cataclysm. Players will explore a variety of da dangerous realms accessible by portals as they search for the last bastion of humanity, the city of Nightingale. So, I hope we're able to actually explore that city. That sounds really cool as well. And it seems like realm walk. So it says realm, walk realm walkers will be able to team up and cooperate with other players to gather materials and co construct massive settlements and build tools and weapons to battle monsters. The one thing I hope it's not is I hope it's not session based because part of me was kind of wondering if that would be a thing. Like I talked about earlier, like I was afraid that maybe they were going to go for something related to similar to Icarus, but I don't think I think they're going to go for something more open ended. I, at least I hope. But, you know, that's always going to be in the back of my mind until we find out for sure. And then it talks about the trailer, which we saw that already in Flexion. They promise repeatable gameplay. So, and yeah, this is what I was talking about here where um, I, I did watch that interview um, briefly. And this was probably, this is probably mentioned in that interview that, that happened right after the trailer was released. As a matter of fact, I should probably see if I can find that really quick. So I think it was right here. Okay, so this is where the CEO talks about it right after. Let's just watch this really quick. Love brand new IP and joining me now is Aaron Flynn from Inflection Games. Aaron, you were on stage at the first Game Awards in 2014, accepting Game of the Year for Dragon Age, and now you've got a new studio, Inflection, up in Canada. Um, what kind of game do we get here with uh, Nightingale? Oh, well, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, so it's a survival crafting game, uh, shared world ideas, so we want to bring players together, solo experiences, cooperative experiences, uh, lots of ability to go and explore these amazing, fantastical, magical realms we're going to give players. Lots of ability to come together, cooperate, uh, lots of opportunity for community building that sort of thing well it looks incredible isn't it? i love uh, show me this game while ago. i was like this looks so cool we have to show this uh, to people and it, you're pretty far along that's real gameplay footage so people will play it next year yeah, absolutely yeah so we're going to be in early access next year on pc only and uh, looking forward to inviting players in if you want to see more play nightingale.com okay so yeah he said so he says shared world I'm, we're going to watch that one more time but that makes me think a, lo a little bit even more about uh the no man's sky situation because um so if, if it's a shared world like it's already existing and you know you're you're right on that as well vank like if uh um, well we don't yeah we don't know if they're going to be you know featuring a quest system but let's say if you do come across the same you know boss or whatever that you're trying to hunt down and then another group has already killed it then you're right that other group might not be able to hunt that boss at that point but that also might be a part of what they're going for maybe the boss will you know maybe it'll respawn or be summonable maybe not or maybe it's just a thing where whoever gets to it first has got it um that's a very interesting idea though i would imagine that if they're going to be doing something like that that it would respawn though or that there would just be multiples of that boss available <laughs> early access i know but let's watch that one more time just to get a better better understanding Love brand new IP, and joining me now is Aaron Flynn from Inflection Games. Aaron, you were on stage at the first Game Awards in 2014, accepting Game of the Year for Dragon Age, and now you've got a new studio, Inflection, up in Canada. Um, what kind of game do we get here with uh, Nightingale? Oh, well, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, so it's a survival crafting game, uh, shared world ideas, so we want to bring mm -hmm, players together, world. solo experiences, cooperative experiences, uh, lots of ability to go and explore these amazing, fantastical, magical realms we're going to give players, lots of ability to come together, cooperate, uh, lots of opportunity for community building that sort of thing well it looks incredible isn't it? i love uh, showing me this game a while ago i was like this looks so cool we have to show this uh, to people so and it, it sounds like that's real game. it sounds like it could be possible for you to get you know let's say 50 people in one place if if all those people go to the same exact realm at the same exact time because that and that might be what they're what they're going for with the the ims system Maybe if everybody, you know, cooperative or solo all meets in the same realm just by chance or, you know, somehow there's a way to communicate, then maybe it would be possible to get, you know, 100, 150 people in one place. And 
one thing that I thought about too is that when it comes to these super big bosses and like how you, we see, you know, we see these realm walkers walking out of the portal, right? And they're going to take on this big boss. That makes me wonder if there is going to be a thing where you have like these giant world boss fights or field boss or whatever fights, but you are capable of bringing like 30, 40, 50 people in there and fighting them all together. I think that'd be sick. And I hope that they, if they, if they are planning to do something like that, that they would showcase and clarify that. But um, yeah, you're absolutely right on that. It does sound like guild systems might be involved. I, I would imagine, I would imagine that's what they're going for. Um, anyway, you know, the guild systems, but maybe not on like, cause I'm curious about the initial, the initial starting point, like how many people can you start with initially? And then, and then, uh, how quickly will we be able to meet other people and, and either set up big, big communities or just go around and doing content with them. And with the with the IMS system, like for the other games, I don't know if Myth of Empires had this issue, issue but I know for like Atlas and Life is Feudal, when um, you had a hundred people in a grid, because if you if any of you were uh, in the launch of Atlas, you probably know how horrible that was. And uh, oh, did I, <laughs> you notice that too, Frankie? Whoops! But uh, so the Atlas launch was super horrible because there was a limited amount of spots in each grid and. At the start, there was like, you know, hundreds, thousands of people trying to log in all at the same time. So the starting zones were getting super laggy. So and, and with Life is Feudal, it was kind of the same thing where, you know, if you had too many people in a grid, things would start to lag and sometimes uh, grids would shut down. So everybody that was in that grid would just not be able to log in for a little while. They just crash. So with this IMS system, maybe they're going for a thing where... Um, when you're out and about in this world, however large it may be connected by all these different realms, maybe it's a thing where if that were to happen, like let's say we get 150, 250 people all in one realm at the same time, maybe we don't crash. Maybe everything works just fine and we're able to do uh, do bigger content if it's available or we just see the we just see the absolute chaos that that comes from having that many people in one place. Um, I think that could potentially be what they're using the IMS uh, system for, um, because if or you know if, if they're not going to initially let us just all get into the same grids and have a bunch of people, then I'm assuming maybe if if we it happens by random, maybe the IMS uh, IMS system will be prepared to handle that. Um, it seems so. This should be mainly FPS in terms of combat. Um. Yeah, pistols, rifles, I saw those too, or saw those, but the great axe that I saw, or I should say just axe, that seemed more like it could also be used as a weapon. Where was that? It was, yeah, I saw the rifles right there, but the axe part, you know, when they have, the, yeah, right there, right there. It seemed like it could be more of a, and we can't see the other head. That's not a, no, that's not a double headed. That's just a single headed. So let me see if I can see. I can possibly spot that other character's axe. Yeah, I don't know. Because I haven't I haven't looked all together at all their different weapons that they have available. This one looks like it could potentially be... I don't know what to call that. I mean, if, to me, it looks like it could potentially be a blade kind of weapon. But I don't know. Either they're still early in the process before they actually start the shaping process. Or that is just the process to craft this gun. It might be. It's probably the gun. But I haven't seen any other weapons so far, other than what you mentioned too, like the rifle. I, I remember seeing a shotgun. So right here, we on the right side, it looks like that person is holding that same axe. So yeah, it does look like it's more of a tool. I would be curious about that too. Like I would love to use something kind of similar to this, not exactly that weapon, but you know, having a two-handed maul would be really cool. But this is the one I was talking about. We got the. The shotgun right here. This is the one that I saw too. And we got the rifle here. But you're right. I don't think I've seen any other melee weapons so far other than that. Now there might be some towards the end here. Let's see what we got. Okay, so we do have somebody with the mall on this side right here. That guy on the far left's got a rifle. These two do seem to have... Oh yeah, this guy's got a mall as well. So, and what is that? A tomahawk or what is that? Oh, that's a pistol. Why did it look like an axe? From a certain angle so it seems like these might be 
Oh, is that a shovel? Hold on. <laughs> is that guy rocking a shovel? That's funny. I can see what you're saying, though. Yeah, there's a lot of different uh, tools being utilized as weapons. But the fact that they're bringing them into this encounter makes me think that we can totally use them and be just fine. I would probably use the axe. Saw somebody with a cane. Are you talking about that guy that... Wait, you're talking about uh, them? I think that one's the mall. Let me see if I can get a better look at that. Yeah, I think that one's the mall, if, if you're talking about that one. But yeah, I didn't even notice that guy had a shovel. That's really cool. I would love to whack some people with a shovel. But because it has such a big emphasis on crafting, I would imagine that they'd give us a decent chunk of weapons to utilize. But, you know, that's something that we'll, we'll definitely have to find out more of. That's a good catch, though. I didn't even fully notice that at first. I was assuming that they'd have a good chunk of weapons available already. But for this one, so this is another one. I haven't fully read through this one yet, but let's read through this one. So it's a new studio helmed by Aaron Flynn of Bioware fame has unveiled its first title at the Game Awards as Improxable. Imp I'm sorry, Improbable and Inflexian games have revealed Nightingale, a game, in, a game of survival in multiple realms. <laughs> the Shovel Gang. That would be so funny. Oh my god. So Nightingale sets the player on a journey of the Realm Walker where they must survive across a myriad of increasingly dangerous realms, explore alone or band together with other survivors, obtaining valuable materials to construct settlements, and craft viable, uh, vital tools and weaponry as you fight against deadly monstrosities and the Fae. Hmm. So the fact that it includes... Deadly Monstrosities and the Fade. I don't know if this is coming from somewhere else, like if they got um, some external information that wasn't available in either that interview or the website. But, I mean, just by the trailer alone, it did seem like we would be getting access to more than just the Fae as far as monsters go. I don't know if the, uh, the people or the enemies in the desert are considered Fae. Sorry about the flash, but they might be. I mean, they... They kind of seem like they have that look to them as well, like similar to the ones we saw in the beginning. But I would imagine like maybe the giant really isn't considered Fey. It does seem like we have a lot of unique enemies overall, though. And like I love this building structure right here. That there's another look at that windmill there. That'll be really cool to build. Watchtower on the left side here. And I do see that wreck ship in the back. I I don't think we probably get a I don't think we get a naval system for a while though. I think it's probably just going to be a thing where the realms is is the majority of it. So you, you're thinking the realms must have their own weaponry sets? Because, yeah, it does seem like when we explore these different realms, we go to different biomes. So um, that would be pretty cool if that's the case. I see that on the right side. What is that? Oh, okay. Okay, I see it now. It looks beautiful so far, though. Gorgeous. And I do love the aesthetic of some of the outfits. Like this one, I would probably wear. I would definitely wear that. So it says, Nightingale will see players travel through portals between worlds in order to gather resources and materials with the danger increasing as they continue to travel. And that's another thing too. So, and and they haven't, they haven't fully said PVP yet, but I'm starting, as the more and more I read through this, through this stuff, I'm starting to get the vibe that there will be um, either danger zones or at some point, you know, if we do come across people that PVP might just be automatically possible, but they, I don't know. They've put a strong emphasis on this co-op part, uh, the co-op part of the description. So I don't know, maybe, maybe PVP won't be possible. I think we'll have to see on that one, but the danger increasing part, I like the sound of the, I like the sound of that. So if we go from like portal to portal, like maybe it's a thing where I'm assuming it might be a thing where you can just stay in your default realm if you want to and just kind of live out your days peacefully, level up or, you know, however the progression system works and kind of learn the game. And then other people can just start going through these different realms together if they want to. Or maybe you just build like a forward base somewhere. You master the terrain. Like, let's say if you wanted to go to the ice biome and arc, you just build a base out there, but you also build a base on the shoreline and you could just do the same thing here. You build one in your default base or default realm. Once you're done there, you go to the next one, keep building forward bases and keep going. I like the sound of that too, but 
But then it begs the question of if it gets more dangerous as they as they continue to travel, I wonder if that means then that we can go we I wonder if that means that we can't go to other players default realms or if it's a thing where everybody's default realm is like a safe zone and then once we get through these portals then we start going to the realms that are conjoined and we can all start meeting up with other people together like besides our own group if we just start with our own party or if we start alone um then when we get to these other realms we can start actually meeting more people what if we kill a big snake and take its fangs to craft I, that would be so cool i really want to see more about this crafting system though because i think if they are able to make a really intricate crafting system um especially with the way this game is looking so far i think it could be really cool like like i said i um like when i played mortal online and even mortal online too like those games had really really awesome crafting systems like you could craft the the blade the hilt the pommel i want to see a crafting system like that because um every time i've seen one that goes above and beyond just putting the materials in and crafting the whole thing all at once just simple willy-nilly i've always appreciated it like even new world it um, you know, despite the the issues that had popped up in that game, when they had revamped the crafting system, I was really happy about that. I loved, I love seeing that crafting system. Let's see the next one here. So, actually, no. Let's look at the um, the release date one. When is the release date? So for this one, Nightingale, the debut game from Inflexion Games, was announced with the worldwide premiere trailer at the 2021 Game Awards. With, while Inflexion is a new studio, the, can, the Canada-based studio touts veterans who have won Game Awards for the previous work. The studio, formerly known as Improbable Canada, this is what I saw earlier, is headed by Aaron Flynn, who previously served as a general manager at BioWare. The veteran nature of the company was evident by the polished nature of the trailer. Nightingale will release sometime in 2022, though a more specific date has yet to be announced. The game's website teases the likelihood of playtests ahead of the game's official worldwide release. At launch, the game will be PC exclusive, and this is the part that I didn't know before. The game's console version is expected to launch a few months after the PC ver version. That makes me wonder if it's going to have crossplay as well. I know for... I can't remember if Ark does. Um, I know Ark is on PlayStation. I was, I was playing that a little bit on PS4 um, the other week. I was planning for quite a while actually but if it does have cross play that could really boost their numbers i noticed that they haven't actually had a page made yet on steam and it might actually become a little bit of an issue if they do because um there's already a game and this is also why i didn't put it in the nightingale, nightingale category there's already a game on steam called nightingale so i don't know that i don't know how it's gonna work but um i'm you know i i'm sure that if people see the picture they'll immediately know which one's which but yeah there's there's that and they haven't shown um, they don't have a page yet on steam and it doesn't seem like they have shown anything uh suggesting that they will be on steam yet but i'm assuming they will like either it'll be steam or steam and epic but so far they haven't said anything about epic either i, I hope it i hope if they do epic that it's on steam as well I just, I like it better when they do both. Really hope the crafting is up to part. Yeah, I, I like that idea. I, I really hope so as well. I think that's something that can um, not necessarily set them apart, but just kind of add to furthering their game on the innovation side, because so often a lot of the crafting systems are fairly simplistic. And I love it when we have games that have more intricate crafting systems. They're so much more fun to play and so much more worthwhile. Like I love... I love when I play Life is Feudal, for example, too. And I was a I was a blacksmith in that game and I had such a blast. Like I I had never gone as hard into crafting as I did in that one and Mortal. But it was so fun. It was so fun. Um if that was a ship, maybe the, that was a beach and mobs were fish people. It's possible. Um they haven't shown anything related to like naval, but I mean, you know, they just based off of the Victorian era and just the setting. I hate that I keep clicking to that immediately, but it seems like naval systems, you know, would be warranted for a game like this. I mean, we we saw multiple areas near the shoreline, and we did see that wrecked ship as well. That might actually be another one. I saw this earlier. It's a wrecked ship. No? 
I can't tell if that's just the tree line or what exactly that is in the background here. Looks like it could be... No, I think that's still in the forest. But when we were in the desert area, I remember seeing that wrecked ship over there. It'd be really cool if it, at some point they did introduce a naval system. Although with this portal system, maybe they're going to go strictly for that. I don't, And I definitely don't expect it to be a thing they would do right away. Um, but if they were able to pull something like that, that off in the future, that'd be pretty cool too. And um, is this the first person? No, it's more of a it's more of a survival sandbox. But yeah, for the for the testing part of it, I highly recommend checking out the website and signing up because we don't we don't know how soon they're gonna start play testing. They might do it as early as January. That'd be pretty cool if that happened. But maybe at the latest, maybe uh, February. We'll see though on that side of things. But just to continue here, so a Nightingale will be a shared world steampunk flavored survival game. The game begins with the player getting stranded in a monster-ridden fantasy realm called the Fae after the collapse of an arcane portal network. Nightingale's mechanics will focus on exploring the game's open-world map. Additionally, players will be able to build infrastructure like farms, estates, and weapons and tools. While single-player gaming will be possible, the mechanics of the game have been built to encourage working together with an online community. Uh, now, I think when they say single-player, I don't think... It doesn't seem like there's going to be like a single-player mode unless something unless somebody's read something else, but... Because and he even said shared world, so it seems like you're going to get dropped into this game, but you're immediately going to be a part of the universe, so to speak. Um, I don't. I'm I'm, a, I'm expecting it to not have a single player, but I don't know. It could be. It could it could have a solo like single player mode, like all on its own. Who knows? But I did see somebody talk about mods earlier. I would imagine uh, mods being a thing too, even if it's just like visual on the visual side, not as much on the server side, because I don't think they sh uh, said anything about server hosting yet either. So if it's just on the server, on the visual side, even that would be pretty cool, I'd say. Um, let me see. Yeah, the forge scene looked really cool. I like that scene too. Um, actually, I should have a picture of that one right in here. Yeah. I like the look of that a lot. I really hope that they do. I can't stress this enough. I really hope to see a really intricate crafting system from this one. I'm so hopeful for that. Let's read this one here. Oh, Game Informer. Okay. Okay, so Nightingale, a Victorian shared survival crafting game from ex-Bioware developers, including ex-Bioware general manager Aaron Flynn, has been announced. Flynn announced that he was building a new studio for Improbable back in 2019. So yeah, and this studio was only opened in 2019. So that's... um. For me, for me, at least, that's like, you know, that's a pretty short amount of time. 2019 and two years, you know, almost two years later, whenever it was built, depending on, you know, when it was built, they're already getting their game ready to go. That's pretty cool. And it seems like they're really adamant about wanting to go for a 2022 release date. So um, hopefully it's not Q4, but it very well could be with how short of a time they've, I don't know, for survival games, it might be a little bit of a different story. You know, two years might be plenty of time for survival. But, you know, just based in, basing it off of MMOs, I've, I've, I can't help basing, but base it off of MMOs. That, that would be a short amount of time. But, um, but yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't think this one's going to be an MMO. Um, at least not, uh, at least not in the, in the definition sense. Like, it seems like a thing where with the IMS system, like we talked about when we were talking about the scavenger part, that if we were able to get, 200 300 maybe a thousand people in one place maybe this ims system that they're going to go for um might be able to hold all those players at one time maybe it just won't kick everybody out of the realm or however they're planning to do that system but until they talk more about that i don't know if we'll be able to be able to you know speculate too much on that or oh yeah i saw that this morning i was so bummed out <laughs> yeah that sucked but it, it makes sense i think at this point when it comes to the delays like if like i said in the video if, if uh, 2020 uh, 2020 and 2021 has taught us anything or retaught us anything especially for me it's that um you know delaying a game if it needs it is going to be far better than rushing it out and having a messy launch because just every time it seems like it just ends in disaster and also um you know it doesn't it doesn't always end in disaster like we got games like no man's sky and you know other ones that have come back from that but it's it's not always a guarantee because you know at some point some people just are like i'm never coming back if i stop playing this game that happens quite a bit still so it's just it's you know a loss of a loss of people that you didn't really need to lose in the first place 
But set in a Victorian gas lamp fantasy setting, Nightingale will task players with exploring worlds in search of the rumored last haven of humanity called Nightingale. It's currently in development and slated for an early access release on PC sometime next year. Players can expect forests, swamps, deserts, and more in the lands of the Fey to explore. Along the way, they'll need to construct estates, farms, communities, and more to survive using crafted tools, gears, and weapons. You'll be able to do all of this alongside friends and foes alike, thanks to the shared world aspect of Nightingale. So yeah, I'm really curious to learn more about the shared world part. And I did see somebody worried about the early access thing earlier. I, you know, early access, it, it really is a hit or miss these days, but we do have, you know, we still have plenty of games that have, that have released in early access that have been, you know, more polished than we would expect early access games to be. Um, I wish I could think of one, right? Well, I think Valheim could be that, that was released in early access, right? Because I think that might be in the, the most recent example I can think of. Right. Okay. So yeah. So yeah, there's, you know, as long as they do it like that, where it feels like a full game and early access is just basically them saying, we want to take a year to show you guys what the full game of this, what the full scope of this game is going to look like, then great. Cause hopefully, yeah, hopefully it's not like a super buggy laggy mess on early access launch because like I said, these days, especially, uh, there's only so much people, a lot of people will be able to tolerate on launch. And, um, even though games can make comebacks, sometimes it's not as easy. You know, it, it's really, it's up to chance on that one. But I think we've done that one. And for the majority of the rest of these ones, it kind of talk, you know, it talks about the same thing. Um, this one I think was pretty interesting. I'll read this one last, but I think we've covered the majority of what we're going to be seeing here. Like I said, definitely check out the website and follow their Twitter, all their social medias. Maybe in the next couple of days, we might get some more information. I'm still, I'm really itching to find out more about this game still. But portals, different worlds, building houses, big monsters, the new open world survival craft, Nightingale, developed by Inflexion Games, composed of former members of BioWare, has been publicly promoted in this year's The Game Awards. The game is expected to be launched on the PC platform in 2022. Nightingale's build, yeah, there we go, is built on the background of the Industrial Revolution in the Victorian era in the 18th century. Players will play the role of the passing through a portal. All players will play the role of passing through a portal to the mysterious other world, Fae. There are many resources here, but there are also hidden dangers. And then according to the official website, so I think it's just going to talk about more of the same. But so far, the game itself seems like it has a lot of potential. I'm really curious to see where this goes. And I do want to see more of the crafting, like I really do. And it was a good point that somebody brought up about the weapons. Um, hopefully, they'll show more of what's going to be involved with the weapon system, too. Um, because I, I like the idea of a shovel, an axe, and the, the mace. Um, the shovel, for me, that's probably going to be my weapon of choice. But I would love to see like a great sword if possible, or, you know, maybe they're just going to go for those ones specifically. And that's it, um, for now, but I think a spear would probably be okay. You know, I think that wouldn't be too bad to have. I would love to have a spear in there and then also find out how the progression system is going to work and find out more about the shared world mechanic, um, especially how they're going to utilize the IMS system the, for improbable, because that's going to be something that is. If we're, if we're able to get this, for example, and then fight one of those giant, super creepy creatures, like out in one of those random realms, if we're able to get even close to this, like 200 people in one area and fight something like that, that would be the time of my life for me personally. I would love the crap out of that. But yeah, yeah, so definitely <laughs> very good point on that, Scoobert. I'm in the same boat. I, I want to call expectations on on this so far. Um, but I'm really curious to find out more. And I think that hopefully they'll go into more detail because I think that this improbable and shared world system could be really cool. Um, and it also is also going to come down to if it actually works, you know, in practice, like on paper, like in, in a test like this, it might look like it'll work, but it might not fully work when we get to the actual early access release. So we'll have to, we'll have to see how everything goes there. Imps following the character in the web page. That would be really nice if we did have pets. Um, I could see something like that too. Having like little helpers. Um, I think we saw those in the trailer too. Like little ones, little uh 
Are these amps? Kind of like these ones, right? Or these more, these look more like, no, not necessarily imps, but this could be one of the things that we could potentially tame. I, for, I forgot all about a taming system. That's right. Yeah, taming the Fae would be really nice too. As long as, I, I don't know if it'd be good to have such a big one, like a big taming system, kind of like Ark, where you have like 50 to 100 tames all in your base and you just, you know, you fight tames with tames kind of thing. Maybe, maybe it would be a thing where it'd be cooler if, if it was more on the player side of it as opposed to, um, you know, the, the thralls for Conan Exiles or um, the tames for Ark. If it was more based on the player's power, I think that'd be really cool. That's a bog rat. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. It didn't seem like this one, at least didn't seem like an imp. This one at first did to a certain degree, but I want to see something like that too. If that's going to be the case, like I would love to have like an imp helper, but I think so far that's pretty much everything that we have to go over right now. I didn't want to make this too long, but um, I did want to talk about some of the basics and uh, some of what we learned about so far. So this is what I found for the majority of my research today. And I'm really curious to see where this goes, but definitely check out the website, playnightingale.com and sign up for this. Keep a ta uh, keep tabs on it. I'm really curious to see more about the shared world and the crafting system. Hopefully you are too. And thank you guys so much for watching as well. It's gonna be a lot of fun to find out more about this game. And just be, for me personally, I wanna support it so bad just because knowing that it's the ex Bioware devs that worked on Dragon Age Mass Effect and whatnot, those are, those are the guys I would definitely throw my support behind as far as um, a game would go, like the next game. Um, even if they're not going to make a game as good as, as good as the, you know, those or, or, uh, live up to them. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me just hanging back from my childhood. I'm down with that. I'm really down with that, but I'll catch you guys later. Thank you guys so much for watching again. I'll probably uh, next week make another video, um, like a full fledged video on this game. I just wanted to do a deep dive today and just give like raw first impressions to it. And yeah, hope you guys have a wonderful night. Peace.